Oh, come on, baby. I didn't hear anything. I told you there's nothing out there. Now, where were we? Fine, fine. You're so scared, I'll go take a look. Nothing to worry about, baby. How about you, uh, just listen to the radio till I get back? How about a little story while you wait? Baby, he won't be back anytime soon. If you get scared, make sure the car doors are locked and tell yourself it's not real. This is Midnight Apocrypha. For tonight's taste of terror, we bring you Don't Tell Me About Halloween. <sighs> I'm gonna kill my wife tonight. Or maybe tomorrow night. I mean, I'm gonna kill one of my wives. I better, or something's gonna happen to me that won't be good. Well, Halloween's almost here. Halloween's the deadline. And Candace has to be dead before Halloween. Only trouble is, I'm not sure I'll recognize her when she shows up. You ever been in Salem, Massachusetts? Place where they hanged all the witches? No, they didn't burn them at the stake. Lots of people think so, but they didn't. They hanged him. All except the man-witch, old Giles Corey. They pressed him to death. Very unpleasant. Well, it was in Salem this particular Halloween that I met Candace. It was dark up there on the hill where the gallows used to stand. Dark and cold with a damp wind coming in off the sea. The few little lights you could see in the dusk only made it darker and lonelier and creepier up there. And I remember how I shivered as I started down the hill to town. And I remember how I jumped when something that looked like a black cat jumped out of the shadows at my feet. <coughs> Without thinking, I yelled, Who's that? And my heart almost stopped beating because... Wow, good evening. I'd been up there all alone, and then all of a sudden there was a woman standing beside me. You're the first human being that's spoken to me tonight. Who... Who are you? I'm Candace. I don't know any Candace. Well, you didn't. But you do now. You nearly scared me to death. Oh, I wouldn't do that to you. What's your name? Craig. You like me, Craig? What? <laughs> I, I don't even know what you look like. I like you very much. Well, but I... Kiss me. Craig. No. Kiss me, I said. Mm, you know, you're going to be a very nice husband for me, Craig. What do you mean? I'm not going to... Oh, yes you are. When I say something's going to happen, it happens, Craig. But I... I'm not... Wouldn't you like to be rich, Craig? And have a beautiful wife? I am beautiful. You'll see. Wouldn't you like to be rich and wise and happy and live forever? Hmm. Wouldn't you, Craig? Who the devil are you? <laughs> Why, that's a very apt way of putting it, Craig. Who are you? I'm Candace. That doesn't mean anything to me. I'm the witch they didn't hang, Craig. 
Well, she was right. I am rich. Whenever I need money, which hasn't been for a long time now, I ask Candace when she comes to see me at Halloween time. I am reasonably wise, I suppose. I'm quite an authority on American history. Quite well considered at the university here. And while I can't say I've lived forever, I have lived 253 years. Yeah, that's right. You see, I met Candace on the hill above Salem in the year 1694. Two years after Cotton Mather stopped hanging witches. Yes, Candace has kept her promise. I remember the way she put it, standing up there in the early morning, watching the mist crawl along the ground below us. You'll not see me now till another Halloween. And I can't tell you what form I'll be in when I come to see you again. But if you see a strange bird or a lost dog or any strange being at your door come Halloween, you say, who's that? And if it so happens the stranger's me, why then, I'll be home with you till the cock crows for morning. And I remember I started to speak, to ask questions, but she stopped me. For the time's short now, my love, and remember the words, and we've all the future before us. As long as I live, you shall live. And below us somewhere, a rooster crowed, and I was standing alone on the hill and a yellow butterfly was rising in circles above my head. I watched it disappear into the first rays of the sun. <laughs> no, I didn't believe it either. And yet we were only two years away from the witchcraft trials, and whatever may be said today, the belief in witches didn't die as quick a death as modern historians would have you believe. I was there. I know. Besides, I had married a witch. Halloween, 1695. A stray dog lay on my doorstep, shivering in the rain. I don't like dogs. I was about to boot the animal into the street when I caught a look in its eyes. I yelled, Who's that? Well, it's about time. I've been lying there on that doorstep, freezing and nearly drowned, without a stitch on, and you stand there and look at me like some great fool. Get me something to put around me and stir up the fire before I catch my death of cold. And I do believe you were going to kick me, too. What did I ever see in you? Candace, <laughs> dear, how was I to know? Give me that quilt! Oh. She was all contriteness and apologies in a moment. But I can feel that slap alongside my chops from two and a half centuries ago. Our first anniversary was a very pleasant one. I was rather glad I'd married a witch. <laughs> it had its drawbacks, though, despite wealth and growing wisdom. People around me in Salem grew old, and I seemed to stay the same age. I moved away, and the years went on. I moved away from Salem, and I moved away from Philadelphia, and I moved from Baltimore and Richmond, Savannah, and a score of other places. I spoke to George Washington, and I watched Robert Fulton's steamboat chug up the Hudson when I was more than a hundred years old, and looked thirty-five. And every Halloween, I welcomed Candace home for a night. One year, in a farmhouse on an Illinois prairie, a red fox whined at my door. And it was Candace. One year, a blue jay flew down from a tree in Missouri. And another year, she came as a skittering little gray field mouse. And the year I came back to Wisconsin after the Civil War, a porcupine gnawed its way into my cabin on Halloween night, and one of its quills spiked me before I thought to say, Who's that? And when Candace smiled at me, there was only a strand of yellow hair through the thick of my thumb. I remember she pulled it out, and it hurt. Years, and years, and years. She's been a wonderful wife, but I never forget what she is. Once a year is getting to be enough. It was just 67 years ago, tonight, before Halloween, you see. That was the first time she appeared before Halloween, 1880. Rutherford B. Hayes was still president then. 
Mm, seems like yesterday. I heard something bumping against the front door, and before I thought, I called out, Who's that? I thought you were never going to call. Darling! I didn't know it was you! Well? Huh? Don't people kiss their wives anymore? <laughs> Darling, you, you surprised me. Suppose you surprise me. Hmm. Now. Uh, how come you're so early, dear? Oh, I just thought it would be nice to surprise you. You certainly did surprise me. Did I? You certainly did. Well, what's happened since last year? Well, why, um... Nothing much. That's so. Wh what have you been doing? I've been away. Where? Craig. You'll be better off if you don't inquire too closely into my private affairs. Being married to a witch ought to be enough for you. I'm, I'm just interested, Candace. Like I'm interested in what you do when I'm away. What? I am interested, you know. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, dear. You don't? No. Don't you ever get... Lonely while I'm away. What? Uh, why, certainly. Mm hmm. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Craig. I don't either. You're forgetting that I'm a witch, dear. What? You can't keep anything from me, Craig. Don't you know that? Why, I. Oh, I won't punish you, Craig. But you mustn't run around with red haired girls. Why, I don't know what you're Oh, yes, you do. So, I just decided to take that temptation away from you. Candace, what did you- Look over there at the window, darling. And I looked. And peering in the window out of the darkness was a frightened, tiny red squirrel, its teeth chattering with terror and cold. She's still got her red hair, dear. Candace! Candace, did you do that to her? Of course, dear. No, no. Don't try to rescue her, Craig. I've got other plans for your little girlfriend. What are you going to... Listen. Now come here and kiss me. Mm. Good. Yes, in some ways, it's fine. In some ways. You know, in the last 50, 60 years, I've gotten so I'm afraid to say who's that at all. Uh, wait a second. Did you hear anything? No. No, no, I guess she's not here. I wouldn't want her to surprise me again. I want to surprise her. It's 67 years ago that she set the wolves on that poor little red squirrel that was once Marjorie... Uh, I've forgotten her last name. Um, but I haven't forgotten what she did to me. They arrested me for murder. Candace let me stay in jail a whole year. I waited till the next Halloween, 1881, till a little screech owl came and perched on the window ledge of my cell. Even then, it took me half an hour to remember to say, Who's that? Sure, she was very sorry, she said. Very sorry, but I had to be punished for being unfaithful to her. Unfaithful! I never even kissed Marjorie. That witch! Believe me, I was pretty careful after I got out of there and moved to Oklahoma. If I had any female acquaintances, I stopped seeing them along in early September. But, darn it, how would you like it if you only saw your wife once a year? And you knew that she could turn you into a, a caterpillar or a hippopotamus or something whenever she got miffed at you. You'd look around too. Just like I did. She nearly caught me again in Washington, D.C. That was 1910. I'd been a good boy for nearly 50 years. Well... Pretty good. At least careful. 
I was standing outside the door of the Willard Hotel that Halloween night, and a big moth dropped out of the darkness and lit on my shoulder. Candace likes to be a moth, I think. She's appeared that way 15, 20 times. Well, I knew at once what it was. My conscience was reasonably clear, so I just said, Who's that? Hello, darling. Welcome back, Candace, dear. Been a good boy? <laughs> Perfect, darling. Love, Candace. Mad about Candace. You better be. Now, Candace? You living here now? In the hotel? I... I hope you like it. I've never been in Washington before. Well, we'll go sightseeing tomorrow. Oh, I saw quite a lot of it. Flying in. Yes? Who's that woman? What woman? Why, Craig! Darling! Where on earth have you been? <laughs> yeah, I thought Gertrude was in Chicago where I'd left her. Wasn't that just my luck? I don't know what Candace did to her, she just disappeared. But you know what that witch did to me? She turned me into a fire alarm box. <laughs> don't laugh, it isn't funny. From October 31st, 1910 to October 31st, 1911, I stood there in front of the Willard Hotel, rain and shine, snow and boiling hot weather, and nobody even turned in an alarm on me. Of course, they did paint me in the spring. Then, at half past eleven on Halloween, a little black dog came by. I tried to say, who's that? And I made it all right because I could hear gears clicking and wheels turning and there we were. Candace in a black fur coat, me in a blue serge suit all plastered with red paint. <laughs> you look perfectly awful, Craig. Well, how do you think I feel? Oh, my feet. Oh, well, now maybe you won't be chasing other women, my dear. Candace, I... I promise I'll never do it again. Well, you better not, sweetheart. I'm a very jealous woman. So I noticed. And if you think that was bad, how would you like me to... No, no, Candace. Please. No, no. Don't tell me. You may kiss me now. Oh. And don't get paint all over my coat. Candace can be very sweet when she wants to be. But these last 30 years, she doesn't seem to want to be very much. She spends most of the time she's here asking me questions about what I've been doing, where I've been, the people I've seen. Well, friend, I'm getting awful tired. 253 years is a long time. A long, long time with a jealous wife. So, I'm gonna get rid of her. This time, I'm done. No, I don't love Candace anymore. I'm afraid of her. I told you I got this little job here at the university in the history department. I've got a little cottage up in the hills where I go every Halloween. Well... I don't want Candace barging in on Faculty Row. I'm not supposed to be married here. You know how that is. So, so I decided to end it all this year. I'm gonna kill Candace. That is, I hope I am. When she appears, I, I'm not gonna say who's that. And then, Alicia and I are gonna be married. Oh. I, I didn't tell you about Alicia. Here comes Alicia now. Uh, I'd like to have you meet her. Um, this is Alicia. How do you do? Alicia and I are going to be married. Yes, indeedy, right after Halloween. -y. Alicia's secretary to the Deanie of women. <laughs> That's how I met Craig. Why? I hope you don't mean to imply that I was flirting with the Dean, Alicia. Oh goodness no, dear. I mean you were being introduced to her when... When we first saw each other. <sighs> I'll never forget. Oh, I won't either. Isn't she pretty? 
Oh, Craig, you mustn't talk to strangers that way. Well, I'm sorry, dear, but you are pretty. Oh, but I'm so much younger than you are, Craig. Well, uh, you are a little younger, dear, but that won't make any difference, will it? <laughs> oh, not to me, darling. Excuse us a second. Darling, I love you. Darling, I love you. <laughs> Kiss me. Oh, but darling, they're looking. Shut your eyes a second, will you please? Now, darling. Craig, dear? You like her? She's quite a girl, isn't she? Nothing at all like Candace. Man, am I tired of Candace. Oh, uh, wait a second. The phone's ringing. I'll be right with you. Hello? Hello, darling. This is Alicia. Oh, or, uh, <clears throat> hello, dear. Are you going up to the cabin today? I'm just leaving, darling. Oh, I wish I could go with you. Well, I do too, but, but I'll be back in a day or so. Oh, good night, please. <laughs> no, no, dear. No, uh, you know it can't be done. Hmm, I wish I could go. Well, it, it isn't practicable, dear. I'll, I'll hurry back. I could drive up tomorrow. I'll probably be back tomorrow. Oh, I'll miss you. I'll miss you. I just wanted to say goodbye. I love you. I love you. See you in a day or so, honey. All right, but I wish I could go along. <laughs> it can't be done, sweetie. I might drive up and surprise you. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Goodbye. Alicia! Wait! Oh my god, she can't do that if she does. Hello? Hello? Get me, uh, get me a 3412J. Well, so here I am. I wish I could have got Alicia back on the phone. If she comes up here, she'll... No, no. Oh well, she, she won't. She's got better sense. <laughs> well, let's see what time it is. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Revolver, silver bullet, the old Revolutionary War bayonet I had at Valley Forge, Bowie knife Dave Crockett gave me. Yeah, I'm pretty well fixed. Come on, Candace, honey. Come on. Yeah, come on in. <laughs> this time, <laughs> this time you can come ahead of time, baby, and Papa will be waiting for you. <laughs> uh, and then... <sighs> Alicia. <gasps> she's an owl or something. Wait, if she's an owl, better get that shotgun out. Let's see. Well, Candace... Look out! What the dickens was that? Oh. Oh? A moth? <laughs> A moth, eh? Well, 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 Candace. Here, the Saturday Evening Post. <laughs> Light somewhere, darling. Light. There. There! Ah, oh, mister. You're not gonna get away this time, sweetheart. <laughs> get away from that lamp. Get away, I say. Uh, gotcha! You're not dead yet? Well, I'll... Never mind, Craig. What? Never mind. I'm going to die, all right. Who's that? It's too late, Craig. You've killed me. But haven't you forgotten something, darling? What did I forget? You forgot what I told you back there on the hill at Salem, sweetheart. You'll live just as long as I live. And when I die, you'll die. Oh, my... Candace! Candace, let me help you! <laughs> it's too late, darling. Much, much too late. Ha, ha, ha.
Hello. Hello. Is this the forest ranger station? Oh, well, hello, Brad. This is Joe Thomas. Listen, Brad, you better call the county cops or somebody. Well, I don't know. Well, it's the little cabin halfway up Latigo Canyon. You know, the one with the red shutters. Yeah, well, I was on my way up to the station to see, and I, I meet this girl. Please be quiet, will you, lady? This girl and her car is busted down, and, well, I picked her up, and she wants to come up here. Oh, uh, what's your name, lady? Alicia Dina. Alicia Dina. So, she's going to meet this fella here, she says, and I lift her out, and I was just starting away, and I hear her scream. Scream. You know, holler. So I stopped and run inside, and she's yelling her head off. Oh, lady. Lady, please. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, Brad. It sure looks awful strange. No. There wasn't no guy here. No. Nothing. But a squashed moth. One of them big uh, death's head moths, you know? And a skeleton. Yeah. A skeleton. All dried up and dusty. Like it was maybe 250 years old. That's all. Just him and the moth. Hmm. Funny, ain't it? Don't Tell Me About Halloween was written in 1947 by Willis Cooper for the radio series Quiet Please. This production of Don't Tell Me About Halloween has been directed by Melissa Mowday, starring Tyler Palma as Craig, Emily Diskin as Candace, Bryn Madre as Alicia, and featuring the voice talents of Kirk Reichart. Midnight Apocrypha is brought to you by Widener University's Lone Brick Theatre Company in partnership with Forgotten Lore Theatre. If you enjoyed our little fiction, you can find out more about Lone Brick Theatre Company on Facebook and Instagram. Go now to subscribe, like, or follow Midnight Apocrypha. Or you never know what may find you.